Yeah, those those are those are fun lenses. Um, you know, in general, contact lenses is what got me into eye care to begin with. Like when I was a kid, I switched from glasses to contacts, and it like changed my life. So uh, I I have a really big love for contact lenses in general and helping people kind of get into that world. And so yeah, I love contact lens doing contact lens videos and talking about lenses. So I actually am planning a whole series more about contacts coming up here in the next month or so. So. Yeah, uh, actually, in schools now, they're using a lot of 3D modeling and even VR to train doctors, uh, you know, for doing operations and surgeries and just better understanding anatomy and things like that, you know, because you can't just cut open everyone's eye and start performing things. So uh, it's like using that kind of video game learning aspect because you learn a lot with video games. Uh, and so using that in education to teach medicine. Um, I think is really kind of cool kind of frontier that be, that's being explored right now. You know, the, there's a big difference between optical correction and like digital magnification um, in terms of how cameras work as well as technology. There are special kind of VR headsets. The, they're kind of like the, the v, like the Cadillac of low vision devices. So people who are already lost a lot of their functionality with their vision, maybe they only have like a tiny pinpoint of vision that's actually useful. Uh, these devices map out where that pinpoint is. And then they use digital magnification to basically blow up and fit as much information into that useful spot. Um, and, and that's kind of what those devices do. Uh, but again, they're just like you said, they're like these big helmet type of things. Uh, you know, but it has to start somewhere, right? Your, your desktop computer was the size of a house back in like the 60s. So. so that is a constant battle that is done both on the state level as well as on the national federal level. Um, so a lot of doctors, like including myself, we contribute um, both in thought process and in discussions but also a lot of it is, is all state run. Um, so it's all lobbying. And if you know much about the political system and how lobbying works, uh, money is a big issue when it comes to politics, whether you want it, want it to be or not. Um, so yeah, a big, unfortunately, big, big companies that have a lot more money than all of the doctors combined will pay for lobbyists to basically vote against the benefit of what's really right or wrong or what's in the best interest of uh, people's true health care. <laughs> uh, that it's, it's a little scary to say that, but it's um, the, there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny because a lot of times, uh, a lot of times the way your glasses are made, like, like you both of you guys are wearing glasses, you know, if, if you move your glasses two millimeters down your nose or they're a little bit crooked a little bit, that has a more significant effect on your vision than just some of those final little tweaks that we make. Um, like if when we're doing that, it's like at this ideal point of 12 millimeters in front of your cornea sitting on your nose this certain way, that's the right prescription. But as soon as you wear a pair of glasses that's hanging down too low and they're all kind of crooked and not sitting right, then, you know, that it's not even exactly where we had it anyway. So. So there, there is some, there are some debates right now. Um, a big part of eye care, a concern in eye care in general is that people are spending so much more time growing up, especially young kids sitting in front of a phone. Like it's basically the modern pacifier, right? Uh, or babysitter 2.0 that I call it. Because parents, they just, they got, do you guys have kids at all? No. Uh, I, I have a lot of patients who are kids or parents who come in and they have a kid and they, the kid's bored. So they hand them their phone and the kid instantly is just glued to the phone for, you know, an hour. Um, and the concern is that kids spend so much time up close. There is this drive where if you do a lot of up close in your work, whether it's reading a book, whether it's looking at a computer or a phone, 
that uh, drives the development of nearsightedness. So while you're going through adolescence, your eye can actually grow and grow longer, and that corresponds with being more nearsighted. And so people who, these kids who spend all this time really focusing on up-close work, they're developing nearsightedness faster and to a greater degree. And it's actually termed the like myopic epidemic. So I think they estimate that by 2050, half the world's population will be nearsighted. And this is one of the biggest concerns. So there is a little bit of truth that sitting too close to like, not just a TV, but really any anything can actually cause you to be needing stronger glasses. Um, the whole concept with VR though, the debate is that because when you're in VR, you're not necessarily focusing on the screen two centimeters in front of your face. <laughs> you're, you're focusing, you're actually trained, the, the, the technology is supposed to be driving you to look in the distance. You just happen to be looking at a screen. Um, and actually the optics in some of the VR headsets are really interesting. They use um, concentric rings. If you ever like to look at the magnification in there, they have these concentric rings. And that actually is the same technology we use for people who, um, need a, like press biopic or they they need like reading glasses prescription built into their distance prescription so like contact lenses and uh the implants that we put inside of the eye from cataract surgery actually may have these same sort of ring design it, it basically helps focus at different um different focal lengths in the distance intermediate and then up close uh, all built into the same lens so sorry that, that gets really far off in there, but I know my, my nephew's got a VR headset and I put it on and I was like, whoa, like this is, this is nuts. And I kind of understood what they were doing with the optics. So um, long story short, there is some concern that people will actually make their vision worse, but there, you know, it's new technology and there's not enough studies out right now to really determine that. You know, again, there's all different personalities. Um, but, you know, what is nice is that, yeah, a lot of times, what's good about, you know, if you're a cardiologist, like if you can meet a cardiologist, unfortunately, um, you know, they're, they're dealing with heart issues that are often lifelong. And the end result is that event eventually everybody will die. Uh, so that's kind of sad. But with my profession, it's nice because most of the time I get a positive result for somebody like you have blurry vision. Well, most of the time I can correct it with glasses and contacts and you're leaving happy, <laughs> you know? So th there's that nice benefit. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the nice aspect to it. But yeah, people in general, I think they show up and, uh, I think a lot of people like their eye doctor. When I was growing up, I, I didn't like my dentist because they caused me pain or, you know, I just, I didn't like them digging my teeth. Um, but I loved seeing my eye doctor. So um, I hope that people feel that way when they come see me, but I don't know. Like, like you both of you guys are wearing glasses. You know, if, if you move your glasses two millimeters down your nose or they're a little bit crooked a little bit, that has a more significant effect on your vision than just some of those final little tweaks that we make. Um, like if when we're doing that, it's like at this ideal point of 12 millimeters in front of your cornea sitting on your nose this certain way, that's the right prescription. But as soon as you wear a pair of glasses that's hanging down too low and they're all kind of crooked and not sitting right, then, you know, that it's not even exactly where we had it anyway. But yeah, there's a whole aspect to getting the right frame and lenses. So although there are, again, quality of the frame and lenses, some products out there like online that you can get are usually not top of the line. Uh, but for a budget, you know, they'll, they'll get you by. And, you know, if you again, if you don't have insurance, I think it's pretty awesome that they offer that for people. Um, but, you know, if you really want to take good care of your eyes and see your best, there's a reason why better quality items are out there. Yeah, um, I I was basically, there's a lot of things that motivated me to start. One was a lot of my patients come in asking questions and they all say, you know what, I hate to admit this, but I Googled this. 
you know, like, you know, everybody does that. That's, that's our generation. If you, if something breaks in the house or if you've got a weird bump growing, you, you kind of like start Googling, okay, funny looking rash, you know, red bumps, you know, something like that. You try to, um, you know, that you try to teach yourself what's going on, figure the problem out yourself. Um, and I don't blame people for doing that, but a lot of times people come in, they just think that they have like a tumor or they're just way wrong. They're always way wrong. Um, because it's, you know, what's out there for that information is pretty minimal. Uh, and so when I went on, honestly, what happened is that my, one of my lawnmowers, my lawnmower broke, um, and I needed to fix it. So I went to YouTube and YouTube, you know, fixing lawnmower or something like that, watched a video and I was kind of like, well, what's out there for eye care? You know, what's, what are people watching for? Cause I know people are asking the questions cause they're coming to me at telling me they are, uh, so I'm like, okay, well, let's see what, what are people thinking about this topic? And I'll just see some video of some guy in their, their basement who's like 15, just talking stuff. And it'll be like way wrong, like awful wrong. And it's like, this guy has 50,000 views, people watching this guy's stuff. And he's just talking nonsense. <laughs> you know, like, and I'm like, I'm like, that's scary a little bit. So I'm just like, well, what if somebody made it more fun to watch, that's educational, that makes it easier to understand, and it's coming from somebody who actually, you know, is doing this and knows the stuff. So um, it came from kind of my drive to provide public education, which uh, is kind of what the whole goal of the show is. And then um, just kind of saw it kind of fit into my drive to be creative and make something. Um, and so it's, that was kind of the root of it. And I'm just like, you know what, if anyone's going to do this, it's going to be me. Uh, and so I just, you know, I was very hesitant about it at first, but I finally just said, I, as a, it was like my new year's resolution in 2018 at, at that new year's, I was just like, Nope, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump feet for feet, uh, feet first into the deep end of the pool. Right. And so I had to kind of start my journey. Um, and yeah, it's great. 